Good morning, everybody. No, it's not fiberglass Friday. Today we're going to talk about using urethane rubber. Uh, it's sort of my little review on the Brush On 40 from Smooth On. Um, you can go onto their site. I might put the link in the description down below. Uh, they have a, a, a link that uh, actually shows you using it on, on a model, on a, a, on a bust figure. But I'll just talk about what I, how I used it and, and what I thought about it. So I had these, I bought these last year and didn't use them. There is a lifetime on these things. Once they're open, if the, the ingredients inside are, are contacted by air, they can break down pretty quick. So you have to use them up pretty, pretty fast once you've got them opened up. If they've sat for a while, you have to give them a really good stir, both part A and part B. It's, it's equal parts by volume that you have to mix together to make your urethane rubber. So. I'll start by showing you, here's the model here. I just want to make sure I'm in frame. So these were plaster models that I did. You can see underneath there, there's the plaster. These are plaster models that I did uh, a year ago, uh, plaster spin. So you have to make sure that you seal. I put, I think two or three coats of concrete sealer, uh, the, the kind that's a uh, uh, um, solvent based sealer. Uh, not water because if you put a water base on plaster on raw plaster again it's just going to suck in and it's not going to seal as well so i use the solvent based two or three coats you put on there then i put a couple coats of my parting wax on top and then i also for the first time it's called man release it's available by smooth on as well uh, like a watery liquid so you can either brush it on or you can use a spray bottle and spray on a fine mist, uh, two, two coats as well. It's really good, like nothing. So this urethane rubber will stick to everything. So, but if you're gonna have your model, put it with this after you've put a couple coats of wax on, this man release, like I said, available from Smooth On too. Really good stuff and I think it goes a long, long way. Um, before we get started, urethane rubber is it's really messy there's no sort of two ways about it uh, the stuff goes everywhere and it gets stuck on everything so a good thing to do is around the area you're going to be working is if you're using a melamine like I am here is just put a, a thin layer of wax over everything and then it's going to come off easier if you get some spills or splashes Again, for your clothing, I'm just wearing this because I'm not really doing any rubber today. But wear an apron or something unless you really hate your clothes. Um, and then you can go ahead and uh, uh, do it. So uh, here's, here's the stuff. So here's the part A. And it's, I compare it to like corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, the consistency of it there, or thick oil. And then the other part, the part B, it's sort of like peanut butter. Um, I'm just gonna tell you, if you if you mix this ahead, that's quite it's quite tough. You could buy it in smaller containers, but if you have these one gallon size here, it's you have to really have a little bit of Armstrong going there to get the thing to, to stir up there. It's it's not that easy. Um, so I've taken equal parts, roughly. They say I think put. Uh, the part A onto the part B. I found it doesn't really matter, but the one thing that matters is, and it's in their instruction guide, is they're both highly susceptible to water, to even in the air, it'll absorb the, humidid, uh, the humidity in the air. So they really highly recommend that for stirring or application, you don't use any wood, it should be steel or plastic or like ABS, I mean an ABS stick, that's what I stirred that with, uh, because it will, because wood absorbs moisture and it'll have an effect on your your uh, uh, rubber. Uh, same as uh, when you're putting it on too, I, I don't put any PVA on, I used to put PVA on a year ago and I had a bit of trouble and I think it was probably the water in the PVA that caused me some bubbling. I had a really good, this year is way better than last year's with, with this stuff. So I'll just show you quickly what it looks like. I'll just mix a little batch up here. So I've got this, oops, use this little spatula. There we 
get that in there. You see it's in. So now I'm just going to give it a stir. They recommend like about a three minutes. Or if I do this, I use what I use. I'll show you. It's just these cups is what I used. So a half and half. Uh, if you run out, you just mix up another one. Once you've mixed it, you've got about 20 minutes of working time. Uh, that's its 20 minute pot life on here. So depending if you have a big model like these ones here on the background, you have to sort of really hustle with them. You, you have to, you can't fool around. Um, neatness doesn't count. You'll get little runs and drips. It's just sort of the, uh, the nature of the beast. So that's pretty well stirred up for this little bit here. So if I'm using the big cups, what I do, it's you, I mix, this gets right down to the bottom. I mix, mix, mix. And once I've gotten about this much out, I'll go back in and make sure I've gotten everything up from the bottom again. You wanna make sure that it's really mixed up thoroughly. So the very first coat you put on uh, is with a brush. And I'm gonna show you what I do with my brush. So I just cut the very first little half quarter inch, I cut it off. Sorry, I just didn't want to do it over my table. So what that does is gives you a really nice stiff, stiff brush to work with. And it's good for getting this on. So your very first coat, I just want to make sure I'm in frame again. Your very first coat is going to go on quite thin. You're going to use a lot of pressure and you're going to just drag it. I'm just using this piece of wood just as a, as a demo here. So you're going to put it on quite thin and you're going to work and stab it. Get it in there. It's, but that's about all you want for your first coat is really thin like that. That's all you're going to want on there. You're just picking up the detail is all. And if you get a little hair, you better take that off. I didn't brush this off like I should have. But um, just thin. Your very first coat is quite thin like that. It's just to pick up the detail in your model. So then your second coat, there's the trick. You've got about 20 minutes in pot time, pot life on this. And then it's going to sit on the model for about 20 minutes to a half an hour. And what you're going to do is you're going to come back and it has to be tacky, but not pull off the model. If you touch with your finger and it pulls off onto your finger or pulls off of the model, it's, it's not ready yet, you can't put it. But if you go in and it's sticky, but it doesn't come off on your finger and it stays on the model, then it's time to go. If you let it cure too long, you'll get delamination. So you have to be on the ball when you work with this stuff. So you have to stick around, you can't go out to the store for a while or put another coat on tomorrow. It's a one day sort of thing. So now I'll show you on this side. So now I'm gonna go back And you just lay a block down and you can, I just pull it with my palette knife so you can see sort of the thickness I'm putting on there. And that's about what you're going to do over the whole model. So you're getting a good, good layer of it on there <clears throat> and you just keep going around your whole model. <clears throat> Pardon me. So you can see it, it applies quite quickly, like you can get a lot on in a hurry. And like I said, you don't worry about, you don't fiddle too much with it. Don't worry about little ridges or any, that's gonna happen. And I'll show you on the, this model over here. So again, the same thing, you let that dry, you come back 25 minutes, a half an hour, touch it. If it's sticky, but it doesn't come off, then you're ready for the next coat. So what I should tell you is, I'm just gonna grab this and go for a little walkie here. So you can see the coloring. They recommend it as well is to you can see here, so your, your first coat, I didn't want to color that one. So your, your first coat is going to be the natural color. So then the next coat, to make sure you have good coverage, you put a dye in. Um, I tried a clothing dye on a little test piece. It didn't work very well. So what I used was just my iron oxide powder, uh, that if we're in this business, we probably got some kicking around. And you need less than a quarter of a teaspoon, and like even half of that. Uh, mix it, make sure you mix it in really, really well, uh, and it gives you the color. And then you can see that you've got good coverage. So <clears throat> they recommend four to six coats. 
Um, I just did four coats using color on every other coat. Uh, four coats to me is, is plenty. You can see that there's really good thickness on there. Uh, it's on there, it's, you can see. It's really good thickness, uh, nice and meaty. But you can see there's gonna be little drips and ridges. So you don't have to worry too much about that stuff. You, you could fiddle around and, and, and get real fussy, but uh, you don't, like I said, you don't have a lot of pot time on that. So you gotta get it on and then just leave it. Um, uh, I'll give you another little hint is if, <clears throat> if you start like an example on the center on this one and then come in and do the sides, then I'm doing the top and say I had to halfway through, I had to mix another batch. And so then I carry on here and then I'd come back to the bottom here. If you have a little bit left in your container, don't, don't go back into the center because that's already say 10, 15 minutes already curing. So you don't want to add on top of that because it's, it's because it's already curing, but you're going to screw yourself up for the timing of, of the whole cure for the whole thing. Uh, you're going to come back and, and part of it's dry and then the center is going to be all sticky. So if you want to add more, if you've got a little bit left in your cup, just add it to your last piece that you were doing. Don't, don't add it into back to where you started again. Okay. So the advantage of this stuff is, is you're done in a few hours. In about three hours, I'm finished. Uh, about three and a half hours, I was done. So I did this one big piece, this one, and this large piece over here. Come on, focus. Uh, did that all in, in a day and a, a bit. Uh, one morning and then the next day. So it's really fast as opposed to our regular latex rubber where you're, you know, you're applying for a couple of weeks and then you want it to sit for a while. Um, the advantages you know, of this is, is the speed, definitely is the speed. Uh, Tuscany, if people don't know Tuscany, I'm talking about somebody on the forum from New Zealand who uh, casts really large. He loves using urethane rubber for pieces like this that are architectural or have sharp edges that you want to maintain. The problem with latex rubber is, is after a year or so, it's, it's going to shrink a little bit. So wherever you have nice sharp edges on this, what's going to happen is they're going to start rounding over. You're going to look at your, your finished piece and go, why, why are all my edges round like that? It's because of the shrinkage of the latex. But this doesn't shrink. This stays nice and uh, sharp and, and how it was done in, in the first place. You won't have that happening, that the pullover on the top. So uh, he really likes this stuff, uh, as I do too. I, I haven't ever used it yet on a, on a statue or something like that. He does. Uh, I'll work up to that <laughs> till I get brave enough to, uh, to work on it. But... Um, yeah, I just wanted to touch base quick with this stuff if people hadn't... I think I talked about it a little bit last year. Um, but like I said, you can watch their video. A couple things that they don't talk about anything is, is how to clean up. Uh, it doesn't say anywhere how to clean your tools, but what I found was uh, good, old, uh, good old acetone. If you just have a jar of acetone handy, as soon as you're finished, drop your, your brush in, give it a good pump in the jar... Same as your, your spatula, uh, same thing. Get it all, get all your tools into some acetone right away. Dip it and give it a good wipe and they come out clean. Other than that, if you don't care, if you're just doing one more, then you know, if you're doing four coats, so you throw four brushes away. It's not that big of a deal. It's just a cheap, cheap brush. But like I said, using, cutting it off on the end uh, is really useful. I just wanted to find where's my other little brush there, if I can find it. Just hang on one sec. Of course, I won't find it. Um, what you have to want to do is why why if you shorten it up when you've got these undercuts, this deep one like under here, and the same as this one has one, is you want to really get in there and, and get the undercut. You want to get your rubber underneath there. If you have a loosey goosey brush, it it doesn't get in there very good. I've got another brush. It's just a a long handle, darn it, I wish I could find it. Long handle with just a small round head, and it's great for getting in under the, the you could buy it at any craft store, but it's good for getting those undercuts there. Um, 
Uh, Cost-wise, I can't remember what I paid for it. If, if I might look it up, I, I might put that in the description as well too. But uh, you, ha you have to weigh what you think time-wise, like, like this, like I said, you're, you're finished three pieces in a day and a morning, uh, or as opposed to those in your two, three weeks of brushing and uh, then a little bit of cure time. Oh, speaking of cure time too, they do recommend, and I did do it, is after it's cured, you should leave it overnight in a warm room um, to cure for at least 16 hours. And then what I did was I covered everything with plastic and I put a heater in there. And they recommend four to six hours at 150 degrees will also give it more strength. So I did that as well. Uh, another good tip is this stuff, keep it at room temperature. Like I keep it in my office where it's nice and warm. If, you, if it's cold in the winter and you leave it in a cold room, uh, it doesn't work that great. It's, just like their foam stuff there. Everything works better when it's about uh, 72, 73 degrees Fahrenheit, um, 23 Celsius-ish or 22 Celsius. Um, and it works a lot better when it's kept at, at room temperature for sure. So that's something to keep in mind. So anyway, just wanted to show you. So I got some glass on the far one and this one yesterday, this one's almost done, needs some sanding and a bit of trimming on the base. I just wanted to show you quick, people asked and I've showed it before, is uh, how do I get my a nice level top on it? So I'll just show you here. So this is my my little cheap little laser level. Oops, it's not on. There we go. So there you go. So you can see it, it's just you just find a level spot. Make sure your bubbles level on the top, and shoot it across your piece where you think you want your line. And then you take your Dremel and you just cut or your angle grinder and you cut right across the top and give it a couple of spins and you can make a nice level top off. But uh, this was cheap. Bought it at Canadian Tire for, I don't know, 20 bucks or something or 15 bucks. But uh, it helps you get a nice, nice level line on there. Anyway, gang, it's getting a little bit yappy too long here. So I'll cut it short. But just wanted to tell you my little what my thoughts were on the... Uh, brush on 40 and if you want to try it they have it in smaller containers as well check on a smooth on retailer near you there's lots and lots uh, I'm not sponsored by them at all I wish it was but um, but uh, give them a look they've got lots of great products out there for people like us super gang see you later